usubiri wa hamu kwa KTN leo Jumamosi ni wadia Asante sana kujiunga nasi mimi ni mwanaisha Chizidia. Naam natumai ubuheri wa afya popote pale ulipo karibu kwenye taarifa za KTN leo nafahamika kama Lulu Hasan. Lakini kwa muda usokuwa mrefu kabla vidokezea ambao tumekuandalia ni leo ni siku ambapo wakenya wengi wanasubiri kwa hamu kuona hamu ya pili ya makala ya Jicho TV. Mm -hmm. Na vile vile pia naarifiwa vilabu vyote vimezima mziki <laughs> wanatazama taarifa za KTN. Naam lakini kwanza tupate vidokezo. Kisiwa cha Mombasa cha hofiwa kuzama katika miaka msini gayo. Baz. Chama cha Mbaz, bado cha msaka dereva huku kihamwa na vigogo waki. Nani Nandi Express de Limo ampiku semenya katika mbio za Ostrava? Na upu ilikuwa usiano mamluki uwe leofamia shirika la standard na wini wangoi ni katika makala ya jichopezi. Na, <laughs> na mtazamaji baada jana hii leo ni siku ya pili ya ngoma ya jicho pevu paruanja la mihadarati ambapo fichuzi zaidi unaendelea je wataka kujua ni jinsi na kwa sababu gani shirika la standard group lilivamiwa na kwa hondo kamili basi usiondoke mambo ni baada ya kupata mawili matatu kusiana tarifa kuuza leo zikiwe mwele tarifa ya mbasi Na barabara kabisa katika taarifa yetu kuu tunaelekea hadi mkoani Pwani kisiwani Mombasa ambapo kisiwa cha Mombasa hakitakuwa ipo tena katika miaka hamsini ijayo. Hii ni kulingana na wataalamu wa mabadiliko ya hali ya anga wanaonya kuwa jinsi theluji inavyozidi kuyeyuka kutokana na mabadiliko ya hali ya hewa ndivyo viwango vya maji baharini vinavyozidi kuongezeka na hatimaye Mombasa na visiwa vingine vitadidimia na kuzama baharini wataalamu hao wanakutana jijini Mombasa kujadili mabadiliko haya na kutafuta suluhu ya swala hili katika siku za hivi karibuni maji yanazidi kuwa mojawapo ya mahitaji ambayo yamekuwa ghali na nadra zaidi lakini maji haya haya yanatarajiwa kusababisha mojawapo ya janga kuu haswa pwani mwa Kenya katika miaka hamsini ijayo kulingana na wataalamu wa sayansi na hali ya anga kutokana na kuyeyuka kwa theluji katika maeneo ya Pasifiki kisiwa cha Mombasa kama tunavyokijua sasa hakitakuwepo tena bali kitakuwa kimemezwa na bahari because of increase in, in temperature the ice is melting and the ice is the reservoir of more water than what we have in the ocean Wataalamu hawa ambao wanaendelea na kongamano kujadili hali ya anga duniani wanadai kwamba hivi sasa tunavyozungumza visiwa vingine katika maeneo hayo tayari yamemezwa na bahari The coral reefs are changing color they are dying because the climate the, the, the temperature is high higher than normal so the coral reefs cannot survive and it's in the coral reefs where we have the life all the fish all this uh, life in ocean live in the coral reefs so as the coral reefs die, the fish stocks are reducing. Katika miongo ya hivi karibuni pameshuhudiwa mabadiliko ya anga kwa viwango vya juu. Na huku mswada wa mabadiliko ya hali ya anga ukiwa tayari kuwasilishwa bungeni, Kenya inalaumiwa pakubwa kwa baadhi ya mabadiliko yanayoshuhudiwa humu nchini, uharibifu mkubwa wa misitu ukichangia pakubwa katika upungufu wa mvua na kukauka kwa mito. Na endapo mambo hayatabadilika, hali itakuwa mbaya zaidi. Esther Kahumbi, KTN Leo, Mombasa. Na mitabidi mtazamaji kama hujawahi kutembelea kisua cha Mombasa ufanya hivyo hala hala kwani huenda katika siku zijazo Mombasa isaidie kuwa katika vitabu vya historia. Katika taarifa za kisiasa ni kwamba chama cha Alliance Party of Kenya maarufu kama Mbas bado kina msaka dereva baada ya vigogo wa kisiasa wakuu waliokuwa kihusishwa na muungano huo kuonekana kuupa kisogo. Katika mkutano wa kwanza wa wajumbe leo Uhuru Kenyatta, Kalonzo Musyoka na George Saitoti hawakuwepo. Lakini mwenyekiti wa APK Kiraitu Murungi amesema bado wako ndani ya Mbas. Swala so, kuu hapa mbona hawakuhudhuria? Uzinduzi huo ulihudhuriwa na wabunge kumi pekee. Pass.
Mzinduzi wa chama cha Alliance Party of Kenya almaarufu Mbasi Uzinduzi uliokosa sura ya kitaifa ya vigogo wa kisiasa walihudhuria ni wabunge tisa kutoka jamii ya Gema na Walter Nyambati kutoka Kisii ni basi lisilokuwa na dereva I know you have been asked the questions which are must every day who is the driver of this bus Waliotarajiwa kuwa madereva huru Kinyata wa TNA Kalonzo Musyoka wa Waipa na Saitoti wa PNU hawakujitokeza ingawa Kiraitu hajakata tamaa lakini swala kuu iwapo wanataka kuliabiri basi hili mbona wasihudhurie uzinduzi wake The driver with the bus can be Mheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta And driver The driver of the bus can be Mheshimiwa Kalonzo Musyoka The driver of the bus can be Professor George Saitoti. Je, hizi ni ishara za kutengwa kwa Kiraitu Murungi ambaye wengi wamekuwa kimuona kama mfalme wa siasa au kutoka eneo la Meru? Wasiwasi, umeanza kuwaingia walio kwa ndani ya basi hili la Kiraitu. Kitaka kufunga rais yule tutachagua mikono ni tusimamishe watu wengi kama tulisimama 207. Na hata BBC mlisikia wakisema ikiwa rais Kibaki ameshinda ame kwa nini chama yake ina wajube 30 kwa bunge na ingine iko na 90 or 80 something Hatutaki tupate rais pale na sisi wengine tukae huko kwa jua kwa sababu pia sisi tunataka kulinda mali yetu Nairobi tukiwa kwa viti Sisi tutaingiza hata kuku zetu ngombe zetu kila kitu kitaingia katika hiyo basi ni basi ambalo utasema kwa sasa limekwama likitafuta dereva wa kuliendesha purity mwambia ktn leo na masani sana purity mwambia kwa taarifa hiyo Polisi wanamsaka mhubiri mmoja wa eneo la Kaloleni Mombasa kwa madai kuwa amekuwa kiuhada wasichana atawaoa lakini anawatelekeza kile anapopata mimba. Kisa cha hivi karibuni ni cha msichana wa kidato cha pili anadaiwa kupachikwa mimba na kasisi huyo ambaye alimwagiza kuyavia mimba hiyo ndipo amuoe. Isaka Humbi na taarifa hiyo kwa kina. Ndio mara ya kwanza kwake kurudi nyumbani katika muda wa miezi minne akiendamana na mlezi wake ambaye amempa hifadhi huku akienda shule ni msichana wa kidato cha pili Safari hii kwa tofauti na nyingine alizofunga kwenda nyumbani ana hofu sana kwani habari wanazopeleka nyumbani si nzuri alipachukua mimba na mhubiri mmoja anaidaiwa kumdanganya kuwa tamuoa ila alivodhani sivyo Eh al, alisema kwa itolewe basi baada ya kwa inatolewa endele na shule alafu nikimaliza shule ndo anioa an, lakini huku tukizungumza naye mlezi wake ambaye ni mhubiri alilazimika kuelezea wazazi wake kilichojiri haswa ikizingatiwa kuwa kisa hicho kilitendeka nyumbani mwake akasema mimi ni mtu na husikana CDF na mambo ya agrovet na husika akaongea vizuri kumbe mhubiri yule alikuwa na njama nyingine huku akijifanya kumsaidia na masomo ya ziada na kujenga imani na mlezi wake alikuwa akiwaacha sebuleni akasema aka niandike composition alafu ndo akaanza kunishika akiwa sasa na mimba ya miezi miwili aliyokataa kuavia yule mhubiri sasa anadaiwa kuwa mafichoni kila anapotafutwa hapatikani na hata walipotuelekeza nyumbani mwake eneo la Kaloleni mlango wake ulikuwa wazi ishara zote zikiashiria kwamba alikuwa ametoweka muda tu kabla ya kuwasili kwetu majirani wakidai kuijua tabia yake yawahi kujaza mtoto na kesi kapele kwa hivi hivi na kifamilia ikaisha Esther Kaumbi Ketin leo Kaloleni na masikitiko makubwa ya mchungaji kubadilika na kwanza kuwala wana kondoo natumai mkono wa sheria utatumika ili kumchukulia hatua mhubiri huyo Tukirudi hapa jijini Nairobi ni kwamba wenyeji wa Nairobi, Mombasa na Mumias walijitokeza kwa wingi kushiriki mbio za kuchangia operesheni za upasuaji wa moyo katika hospitali ya Mata. Hospitali hiyo huandaa mbio hizo kila mwaka ambapo mchango wake husaidia kufidia gharama ya kutibu maradhi ya moyo kwa watoto wasio na uwezo wa kulipia. Zaidi ya watoto 2000 wamefaidika kwenye mpango huo. Kampuni ya Standard ilikuwa miongoni mwa wafadhili wakuu wa mbio hizo na imahili kuendeleza kuchangia mradi huo. Hapa Nairobi 
wakimbiaji walikusanyika katika uwanja wa Nyayo, Mombasa wakajumuika katika uwanja wa michezo wa KPM Baraki, ilhali mjini Mumias, mbio hizo zilianzia shule ya msingi ya Mumias Buka Academy. Washiriki walikimbia umbali wa kilomita kumi. Mbio hizi za mata hatran huandaliwa kila mwaka. Pesa zinazochangwa kwenye mbio hizo husaidia kupunguza gharama ya upasuaji wa moyo kwa watoto kati ya miezi sita na miaka 18. Normally families raise between 100 and 200,000 shillings. The rest is taken from the kitty that, that different corporates contribute into. Takriban watu 1043 walishiriki mbio hizi jijini Nairobi. Mwaka uliopita Shilingi milioni 29 zilichangwa na kufaidi watoto 230. We are very proud to be associated with the Mata Hospital and the Heart Run. We like to touch a child heart not just this year but for many more years to come. It costs 600,000 shillings and for needy children uh, we ask the hospital asks only for 200,000. Baadhi ya washiriki walitaka hospitali ya Mata kusambaza huduma hiyo ya upasuaji kwa watu wazima. Patrick Amimo KTN leo. Na mna sasa katika mkusanyiko wa taarifa kutoka maeneo mbalimbali humu nchini mzozo wazidi kutokota kuhusu usimamizi wa shamba la maliwa huko Kajiado huku wakimbizi wa ghasia za baada ya uchaguzi walioambukizwa virusi vya ukimwi wakitaka matibabu huko Nyandarua. Hizi zina taarifa nyingine katika mkusanyiko wa taarifa zetu na Agnes Penda. Hali ya sintofahamu imekumba shamba la maliwa katika kaunti ya Kajiado. Baada ya wakazi kuwafurusha maafisa wa polisi wa utawala waliokuwa na nia ya kuzuia uchaguzi wa simamizi wa shamba hilo. Unyaji wanasema kuwa shamba hilo la kari 1994 limekumbwa na mizozo ya uongozi kwa muda mrefu. Kwa gineko wakimbizi wa ghasia za baada ya uchaguzi kutoka eneo la Nyandarwa waliobaki wakati wa ghasia hizo wameitaka serikali kuwasaidia kupata matibabu. Wasiro hao walioambukizwa virusi vya ukimwi wanasema kuwa hali yao ya kiafya ni mbaya wakiwa kambini kufuatia hali mbaya na ukosefu wa hela za kujitibu. Wakizungumza na wanahabari msemaji wao Susan Nyambura amesema kuwa hali yao inadorora kufuatia kukosa lishe bora na dawa za kupunguza makali ya virusi vya ukimwi. Wakimbizi hao wengi wao wanawake sasa wameunda kikundi cha kijamii ili kujisaidia kupata msaada wa haraka vile vile kutoa hamasisho kuhusu maradhi ya ukimwi. <tos> Jamii za wafugaji katika eneo la Pokoto na sababu ya kutabasamu baada ya serikali kuanza kujenga kishinjio katika eneo hilo. Jumba la kishinjio ambalo litaigarimu serikali shilingi milioni mbili litaleta afueni kwa wafugaji ambao wamelazimika kusafiri hadi maeneo ya Nairobi na Busia kupeleka mifugo yao hivyo basi kupata hasara kutokana na ajali na wizi njiani. Bunge wa Kapengura Julius Mugo amesema mradi huo ni hatua kubwa katika maendeleo ya kaunti ya Pokot. Agnes Penda, KTN leo. Aha. Na mtazamaji basi tumemaliza awamu ya kwanza ya taarifa za Kete leo Jumamosi katika awamu ya pili ni spoti na na vile vile mtazamaji tunakusihi usibanduke kwani leo ni makala ya pili na ya mwisho jichupevu ijapokuwa marudio haya yatakuwa siku ya Jumapili na Jumatatu mtawalie. Naam, usende mbali. Na mkaribu katika safi ya spoti ambapo bingwa olimpiki Pamela Jelimo alimpiku Casta Semenya kutoka Afrika Kusini katika mbio za mita 800 zilioandaliwa Australia hapo jana aidha Kenya ilitamba katika mbio za mita 1000 Kasta Semenya hakuona lake kwani Mkenya Pamela Jelimo aliyekuwa nje kwa miaka mitatu kwa jeraha alirudi kwa kishindo. Jelimo aliongoza mbio hizo katika mzunguko wa kwanza na kushinda katika muda wa dakika hamsini na nane sekunde 49. Jelimo alionyesha umairi wake kwa kuacha wenzio huku akimpiku Semenya kwa mita mbili aliyemaliza kwa muda wa dakika mbili sekunde themanini. Wengineko aliyekuwa bingwa wa dunia kwa chipukizi Isaya Kiplagat Coach alikuwa kutazamiwa katika mita elfu tatu kwa upande wa naume. Huku washiriki kama Richard Matelong na Kipsele Coach wakikosa mbio hizo. Kiplagat aliyekuwa pamoja na wakenya wengine wanane alishinda mbio hizo za Australia kwa muda wa dakika saba, sekunde 37.11. 
Mkenya mwenzake Cornelius Kangongo alimaliza kwa muda dakika saba sekunde 39. Andrew Badile kutoka Uingereza alimaliza watatu mbele ya Jafet Korir kutoka Kenya. Na hatimaye bingwa wa Olimpiki Usain Bolt alishamiri huko Ostrava licha ya kutoweka kwa muda wake bora katika mbio za mita moja. Hata hivyo mkimbiaji huyo wa Jamaica hakutimiza lengo lake kwani katika mbio za awali alimaliza kwa muda dakika tisa sekunde 82. Alimaliza kwa muda dakika kumi na sekunde nne akiwa piku St Kitts na Nevis kutoka Marekani. Timu ya soka ya Chipukizi ya Kenya ilianza ubavu mbaya katika dimba la vijana la timu nane nchini Afrika Kusini baada ya kuzabwa mabao matatu kwa nunge na Japan. Kenya ilishindwa kuwa na ufunguzi mzuri dhidi ya wenzao kutoka Japan huku Rio Tatanabi alipachika bao mabao mawili akiangamiza ngome ya vijana wa nyumbani. Licha ya kikosi cha Stanley Okumbi kuwa na nafasi kadhaa za uzoefu ulikuwa changamoto kubwa huko Japan wakipata bao la tatu kupitia kwa Ryuji Hirota. Kenya na shiriki katika dimba la mwaliko la timu nane la vijana. Timu ya UAP Rhinos zachuana na Ruwenzori kwenye fainali ya dimba la Bamburi mwaka huu baada ya timu hizo mbili kujikatia tiketi ya nusu fainali dhidi ya timu za Lions na SDV Transami. Chita kwenye mechi nyingine iliyochezwa hapo jijini Nairobi Rhinos ilipata alama tano za kwanza kupitia Brian Nikuli lakini Edwin Machanje alisawazisha kwa haraka. Fabian Alando alikuwa tishio kubwa kwa Rhinos lakini E, mabingwa hao watetezi walizidi kushamiri kwenye safi ya ushambulizi na wakapata alama kumi kupitia Wilson Kapondo na alipokunza alipelekea Lions kifua mbele na alama zake tano lakini Wilson Kapondo alihakishia mechi hiyo imekamilika kwa alama 19 20 That ball is finding its way to the back. Leslie Black like they're going over. He does have it at the other line. Yes. Well. Well. Can you hear me? Yes. Ramsey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You may award the try. Na mtazamaji, hatimaye mashindano ya kutafuta mtangazaji bora katika shindano la bunga boli imeingia awamu ya la salama lakini huku akisailia wanne pekee ni yapi ambayo waamuzi walikuwa wanatilia manani katika shindano hili Well it's been easy not really because I was a lady but because apparently we blended really well because the people who we thought were good maybe for instance the people who I thought were good immediately would be good to ghost and would be good to Muhammad so we didn't really fight a lot about who is good and who is not good and because it's tv it's about voices it's really hard to hide you know it's not something that you can say this and this person is good and yet you know tv is about what you see it's about what you hear well i think uh, above average most of them had above average actually the finalists it was not so bad but i think they needed to do more because when you want a job then you need to know more about what you are going to uh, work on i mean this is kpl you have to have like the answers in the fingertip the top scorer the former champions 209 champions i mean these are things that should be on your fingertip
25 years, Visa has helped athletes get to the Olympic Games. Now, we're going to help you get there too. When you pay with your Visa card, you stand a chance to win a return trip for two to the London 2012 Olympic Games to fuel the athletes that you stand and cheer in person. Visa, supporting athletes and the Olympic Games for 25 years. People everywhere go with Visa. At last, an investment group account for people with big ideas. For investment groups with big ideas, now there is a fusion group account from Consolidated Bank. Open your account today and enjoy no monthly charges, attractive interest rates and savings, loans up to three times the group savings at attractive interest rates, free internet banking and membership to the bank's business club. Terms and conditions apply. Consolidated Bank. Growing with you. magnificent structures in Kenya have been built using Bamburi cement. When 
Kenya needed the strongest cement, we delivered. When Kenya needed the most durable cement, we delivered. When Kenya needed a variety of products for specific projects, we delivered. And when Kenya needed cement that always gives the same result in each and every bag, naturally, we delivered. This is what Bamburi cement does best and why most construction projects in Kenya use only Bamburi cement. After all, structures do not lie. So, if you are thinking about building, think Bamburi cement. Put a view from the start. Nam, karibu tena. Katika tarifa nyingine ni kwamba ilikuwa ni siku ya kupimana nguvu kati ya ODM na UDF ambapo viongozi hao walionekana kupeleka sera zao mkoa wa Magharibi, lakini kilichobainika ni kwamba ulikuwa ni mkutano wa kupeana mipasho baina ya wataliki wawili wa hivi karibuni, Waziri Mkuu Raila Odinga na naibu wake Musaili Mudavadi. Huku Raila akimwambia Mudavadi kuwa hana mpango wa kustaafu. Mudavadi alikuwa na ujumbe kwa Raila kama UDM ni Pele, UDF ni Messi. Kama ababu wanasema oh ama nani ati hiyo ni mchanga watu wanasema that is a young party. That is precisely the point. That is precisely the point. That this is the young party that is Messi that is going to be in the field because it is young. Those ones are old, they should sit on the sideline. Metoka Jinja, inelekea Misiri, itaenda upende usi, upende usi, mtu moja kitoka, kumi wanaingia ndani. Kumi wanaingia ndani, siyo? Si umeona, hawa vijana wanakuja hapa? Umeona ya team ya ODM Reloaded, si umeona? Simeona. Nam, baada ya taarifa hiyo ya kisiasa, mzangu Ridul Hassan, no. hapo jana wakati ilichokuwa ilipokuwa likienda hewani baadhi ya maeneo humu nchini yalikuwa saa nguvu za umeme. Je, ile ya kupitia mtandao wako hapo? Wa Kenya no. wanasema hivi. <laughs> Na mhamini siamini biishe na kuambia hata tayari watu wameanza katika mtandao wa Twitter huyu Amerix anasema pia Western uko Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, hamna stima na vile vile katika mtandao wa Facebook na rifiwa kwamba hata maeneo ya Kericho pia stima hamna. Na bila shaka natumai tatizo hilo jamaa wa nguvu za umeme mtaweza kulishughulikia kwa haraka angalau wa Kenya waweze kujua ukweli wa mambo katika makala ya Lakini Lulu katika awamu ya pili ni ya mwisho. Mhm. nini? Na mtazamaji basi hapo jana katika makala ya jichopevu tulikueleza jinsi ndugu wawili wa Kiarmenia walivyoingia nchini na visanga na vituko vyao vyote ikiwa ni pamoja na watu walioleta nchini na kuwalinda ili waendelee kuangaisha wa Kenya. Hii leo basi mtazamaji katika sehemu ya pili na ya mwisho ya makala maalum ya jichopevu Paruanja la Mihadarati tunaangazia zaidi kuhusu uvamizi wa shirika la Standard Group jinsi mambo yote yalivyopangwa na kutekelezwa pamoja na visanga zaidi vya ndugu wa Kiarmenia Atur Magarian na Atur Sagarsian vya kupata silaha. Je, kulikuwa na uhusiano wowote baina ya ndugu hao wa Kiarmenia na mwanaharakati wa Nyeri Bimeri Wamboi? Kwa hondo kamili basi mtazamaji jistiri manake meli ya jichopevu iko tayari kungwananga hoda wake akiwa si mwingine bali ni mwana habari mpikuzi Muhammad Ali Akiwa amelala chini akapigwa tena risasi 14 akiwa amelala chini ya baadhi ya maafisa wakuu wa polisi kugundua kwamba jicho pevu lilikuwa likiandaa makala maalum uhusiana na ndugu wawili wa Kiarmenia jama kadhaa zilipangwa jama ya kwanza ilikuwa ni ya kunipa katope na ya pili ya kujaribu kunizuia katika jela hii baridi ya industrial area 
kwa lengo la kunizuia kupeperusha taarifa hizi. Jina langu ni Mohamed Ali na haya ni makala ya Paruwanja la Mihadarati. Sehemu ya inne na ya mwisho. Baada ya afisa wa JKIA kwa jina la Charles Nambale na afisa wa jasusi kwa jina la James Kimuhu kushambuliwa na ndugu hao wa Kiarmenia baada ya kudinda mizigo yao kukaguliwa kamanda wa polisi wa uwanja huo Beatrice Nduta alitumia redio yake ya mawasiliano na kuwajuza wenzake katika makao makuu ya mawasiliano waziri wa biashara kwa wakati huo Mukhisa Kitui Aliwasiliana na mwenzake John Mishuki pamoja na mkurugenzi wa CID Joseph Kamau na kuwataka kufahamu kuwa ndugu hao wamekuwa tishio kwa usalama. Hapa John Mishuki aliamuru ndugu hao kukamatwa mara moja na kufunguliwa mashtaka. Kwa wakati huo uhusiano kati ya aliyekuwa mkurugenzi wa CID Joseph Kamau na aliyekuwa kamishna wa polisi Meja General Hussein Ali ulianza kuwa mbaya zaidi vita baridi vilianza kujiri huku ali ya kidai wa kutaka kujiuzulu iwapo Joseph Kamau hangeli achishwa kazi baada ya vurugu katika uwanja wa ndege mwendo wa takriban saa mbili za usiku hivi polisi walizidi kusalia kimya Atur Magarian anadai kuwa alitembelea kituo kimoja cha polisi akiwa na walinzi wawili wa mwanasiasa mkereketwa Mary Wamboi. Kisha akatoka na kwenda zake nyumbani. Siasa zilipigwa hadi mwendo wa saa tano za usiku. Pale naibu mkuu wa mkoa Nairobi kwa wakati huo Francis Munyambu ambaye sasa ni mkuu wa mkoa bonde la Ufa. Alimpigia simu aliyekuwa OCPD wa Gigiri Patrick Lumumba Dera na kumtaka andae kikosi maalum kitakachovamia nyumba ya Atur na kuwakamata watu wote watakao kuwa ndani ya nyumba hiyo pamoja na kusaka dawa za kulevya bunduki na bidhaa zozote zile ambazo hazijalipiwa ushuru Dakika chache baadaye barabara zote zilielekea katika mtaa wa Runda Kuu kikosi maalum cha SCPU Almaruf Special Crime and Prevention Unit chini ya uongozi wa kamanda wao wakati huo Richard Katola na maafisa wa Flying Squad chini ya kamanda wa Nderi Mwangi wakazingira nyumba hii wakiwa wamejihami kiasi cha haja Atur Magariana alidinda kufungua mlango na hapa ndipo polisi waliamua kuvunja milango ya nyumba hii na kuingia ndani kwa lazima Mvutano uliendelea hadi takriban mwendo wa saa kumi za alfajiri. Wakati aliyekuwa waziri wa usalama wa ndani John Mishuki alipopokea simu ya kujuzwa kuwa polisi wamefanikiwa kuwa kama tandugu hao wa Kiarmenia. Walio kamatwa ni Atur Magarian, Atur Sagarsian, Alexander Park, Dimitri Taski, Nobat Ntwenya. Lucas Makena na Shifana Alarakia. Hata hivyo kulingana na ripoti ya bunge kuhusiana na ndugu wao, jina la jamaa mwingine lilitajwa. Jamaa wa nane ambaye jina lake lilikuwa ni Nyarkashan Trena, aliyekuwa na wenzake Manisha Dav na Aman Kureshi ambao hawajulikani walipo. Fauka na hayo polisi walipata pasi mbili za usafiri kutoka taifa la Urusi na zilizokuwa na majina ya Andre Priluski na Sobka Oleg. Pasi ya Andre Priluski ilitumiwa kuingia nchini tarehe 19 mwezi wa 4 mwaka wa 2006 huku ile ya Sobka Oleg ikisalia bila ya rekodi yoyote kuihusu. Kulingana na nambari ya pasi hiyo ni kwamba pasi hizo zilitwaliwa siku sawia na ambazo zilipokelewa na ndugu wao wa Kiarmenia kupitia jamaa mmoja kwa jina la Gargan Dapar. Kulingana na mwanasiasa mmoja mashuhuri humu nchini aliyehojiwa na serikali ya Marekani ni kwamba Machi mwaka 2006 afisa mmoja mkuu katika serikali pamoja na afisa mwingine mstaafu mkuu wa polisi na mwanasiasa mmoja mashuhuri 
walishirikia na kuwaingiza ndugu hao wa Kiarmenia nchini. Taarifa kutoka ubalozi wa Marekani ilimnuku Kalonzo Musyoka kama jamaa aliyetoa taarifa hizo. Polisi waliendeleza msako na kupata jaketi tatu ya kujikinga na risasi. Mikoba minne ya Bastola. Jaketi 20 za usiku Almaruf Reflector Jackets. Kofia 18, Barakoa 25 Almaruf Face Mask, mikunjo minane ya nyaya, nambari za usajili sita za gari, radio mbili speciali, radio 12 za mawasiliano aina ya Motorola. Mitambo ya kuongeza moto kumi na moja Almaruf Chargers, kamera tatu za CCTV, kamera speciali za kupiga picha gizani, tatu na zinazotumiwa na wanajeshi, vifaa tisa vya elektroniki Almaruf Adapters, nyaya tano za rangi ya samawati, kamera moja ya video, nguo moja ya kijeshi, viatu viwili vya kijeshi pamoja na mitambo miwili ya mawasiliano. Almaruf Transmitters Kando na hayo polisi walifanikiwa kupata magari kumi na matatu pasi za uwanja wa kimataifa wa Jomo Kenyatta nambari ya usajili ya gari na mtambo speciali ya mawasiliano inaweza kunasa mawasiliano ya maafisa wa polisi kote nchini hata kama ndugu hao wangelikuwa nje ya nchi kati ya magari 13 matatu yalikuwa ya serikali moja la umoja wa mataifa na nyingine iliyokuwa ikitumiwa na hudumu wa biashara kutoka ubalozi wa urusi humu nchini magari ya serikali nambari ya usajili ni GKR 666K Mitsubishi Pajero rangi nyeupe kutoka wizara ya mipango ya pili ni GKR 333G Isuzu pickup rangi krimu nyeupe nambari ya injini JAA TFS S 4 HV 7103606 kutoka wizara ya ujenzi ya tatu ni GKR 222K Mitsubishi station wagon rangi ya kijani kibichi kutoka wizara ya elimu hata hivyo wizara usika zilifutilia mbali na kusema kuwa gari hizo hazikuwa zao. Gari nyingine ni ile ya wahudumu wa ubalozi wa Urusi. Nambari ya usajili 2CD 4K. Mercedes Benz inayomilikiwa na mwakilishi wa biashara wa serikali ya Urusi humu nchini. Nambari ya injini WDB 2002002. F 415362 Nyingine ni ya umoja wa mataifa ya shirika la chakula duniani WFP nambari ya usajili 40 UN 277K Masi Ferguson Tractor nambari ya injini 01500 7C 19077 Bazo zimetajwa kutumia nambari ya usajili gushi licha ya polisi kudai kuwa hadi kufikia sasa hawajapata majibu kamili kutoka kwa WFP na ubalozi wa Urusi humu nchini ukuu wakitaja baadhi ya nambari za usajili wa gari kama bandia Mingairi ya hayo mkabala na nyumba ya Atur Magarian polisi pia walifanikiwa kupata pasipoti mbili za Kenya nambari ya usajili a 0301196 na a 0301195 zilizokuwa na majina ya Atur Magarian Atur Sagarsian silaha zingine zilizopatikana ni bunduki aina ya AK47 mbili risasi mia moja na moja mikoba miwili ya bunduki moja aina ya mviringo na moja ya kawaida Bastola mbili aina ya Seska, risasi 147 na mikoba yake minne ya risasi. Are you trying to say that you are telling Magariana at that particular time before you found these things that if he tried to use force and this is after he has himself come 
put the dog in the kennel and you're telling him you are the arrest and he's being handcuffed is when you're telling him this. Use of force, uh, your honor, does not necessarily mean use of a firearm. So if he still resisted the use of force, we could use the combat system to the, I mean to make him. Perhaps he might demonstrate to us the combat system. The combat system, you want me to demonstrate? Yeah. Right, Your Honor, a police officer is mm -hmm. taught how to uh, handle uh, uh, a resisting person. Yes. You can do this. <laughs> huh? Yes. You can do this. Yes. Then you can fell somebody down. Ajabu ni kwamba katika ripoti ya polisi ya fisa mkuu wa polisi ambaye pia ni mkuu wa hifadhi za bunduki SSP Douglas Kirocho licha ya kusema kuwa bunduki mbili za AK47 zilikuwa haramu alishindwa kuelezea bastola mbili aina ya Seska zilikuwa za nani na badala yake kusema kuwa nambari za bastola hizo zilikuwa zimefutwa Juni tarehe tisa baada ya kukamatwa kwa ndugu hao Meja General Hussein Ali alimwandikia aliyekuwa waziri wa uhamiaji Gideon Konchela akimtaka wafurushe nchini Atur Sagarsian, Atur Magarian, Taski Dimitri na Alexander Park aliyowataja kama hatari kwa usalama wa taifa kando na kuwa nchini kinyume na sheria. Serikali ya Kenya ilijibu kwa kuwakatia tiketi za ndege kupitia kampuni ya Akarim Agencies lakini ajabu ni kwamba tiketi hizo zilipelekwa katika jumba la nyayo na jamaa mmoja kwa jina la Maina jamaa ambaye pia alihusika katika kuandaa mkutano bandia na wanahabari katika uwanja wa JKIA kwa wakati huo Maina alitajwa kama mfanyikazi wa ikulu ya Nairobi na aliyekuwa akiandamana na aliyekuwa mkurugenzi wa polisi wa operesheni David Kimayo Tiketi za ndugu hao zilikuwa za daraja ya J ama ukipenda kwa lugha ya kimombo business class na ajabu ni kwamba zilikuwa za kwenda na kurudi nchini Usiku wa kuondolewa nchini Atur Magarian alificha pasi yake ya urusi na walipofika katika uwanja wa ndege wa JKIA ilibidi apewe kibali cha muda nambari ya usajili Inne tisa sufuri sufuri inne mbili. Kibali ambacho kilikuwa kimzuia kurudi nchini lakini ajabu ni kwamba alipewa kibali cha mwezi mmoja hivyo basi kumwezesha kuingia na kuondoka nchini tena La kushangaza zaidi ni kwamba wanne hao wangerudishwa hadi mataifa yao lakini wote walisafirishwa hadi Dubai nchi ambayo walichagua kando na Atur Magarian kupinga taarifa za kuondolewa kwake nchini kwa lazima Mr. Tour if i remember very well last time you told us that uh, you are not deported um, how come you you traveled in a hurry and you left behind your passport were you not deported then No no nothing nothing like that my visa is not cancelled it was my personal will to leave the country after that uh, airport and night incident In fact, they was telling me to go home and I said no, I am not even I am not even going to home. So it was direct to the airport. Jichopevu imebaini kuwa ndugu wao walirudishiwa pasi zao za usafiri za Urusi zilizopatikana katika mtaa wa Runda. Pasi hizo zilizokuwa na majina ya Sobka Oleg na Andre Priluski, lakini picha zilikuwa zile za Magarian na Sagarsian. Licha ya hayo, hazikupigwa muhuri ya kuwazuia kuingia nchini. Badala yake, serikali ilifanya mpango wa wili hao kupokea pasi zao nchini Dubai kutoka kwa jamaa mmoja ajulikanaye kama Gargan Dapar. May I travel without passport? My passport came after me in two days. Why? Where was your passport, Mr. Tu? in the house I'm to, I'm talking about the international flights Yeah a flight I left country without passport then I call uh, to Stanley Morage 
from the Dubai airport because I was uh, questioning Dubai airport intelligence. <coughs> Where is the document? So I tell them in one will arrive. You know, when we was flying, one guy from Kenya intelligence was with us in the same plane. So he arrived in Dubai, he handled some envelope to Dubai intelligence, but they don't care, you know, they have seen all this falsification and... So I was in Dubai airport hotel for one day, mm -hmm. then Stanley Murage sent uh, my bodyguard to the house with the police. They opened the house door because the key was with my bodyguard. They opened the door, they removed the passport from the safe. Then one Indian fellow delivered to the Dubai airport. Mm -hmm. KTN sasa imebaini kuwa polisi wa Abu Dhabi waliwasiliana na polisi wa Kenya na kuwajuza kuwa ndugu wao wameingia nchini na kibali cha Atur Magarian inaonyesha wazi kuwa hawakufurushwa nchini Kenya Kulingana na ripoti ya polisi wa Dubai Atur aletumia pasi yake tarehe kumi Juni siku moja tu baada ya kuondolewa nchini Kenya Atur anashukiwa kutumia pasi nyingine kuingia Dubai. Jambo ambalo kwa mujibu wa duru zetu serikali ya Kenya ilikuwa na ufahamu nayo. Januari tarehe 14 maafisa wawili wa polisi kutoka kitengo cha Presidential Escort Unit Almaruf PEU Kulingana na ripoti walioandikisha katika kituo cha polisi cha Langata ni kwamba wakiwa katika barabara ya Waiyaki walivamiwa na majambazi wa nne waliokuwa wamejihami na bunduki kabla ya kuondoka nao na kuwaacha katika mtao Madaraka na kuwaibia bastola mbili na pesa walizokuwa nazo Bastola hizo aina ya Seska nambari ya usajili S N U 420588 Ilikuwa yake Ali Japan huku nyingine nambari ya usajili SNG 770 ikisalia kuwa ya David Gaido KTN sasa imebaini kuwa jina la Ali Japan lilikuwa bandia na jina lake kamili lilikuwa Abraham Nyaga Njeru aliyehamishwa hadi kituo cha polisi cha Mandera na David Gaido ambaye pia aliamishwa hadi kituo cha polisi cha Eldoret Waybridge. Wawili hao walikuwa wakiendesha gari jeupe aina ya Toyota, nambari ya usajili KAQ 0100W, gari ambalo inadaiwa kwa wakati mmoja kutumiwa na Mary Wamboi. Uchunguzi wetu sasa umebaini wazi kuwa kulingana na shirika la kutoza ushuru nchini KRA. Miliki halali wa gari hiyo ni kampuni ya Figaro's, kampuni inayomilikiwa na Mary Wamboi, Winnie Wangoi Mwai na Gladys Wangoi. Bastola za maafisa hao wawili wa polisi zilizoibiwa na ambazo polisi walishindwa kuelezea zilipo. Hatimaye zilipatikana katika nyumba ya Atur Magarian wakati polisi walipovamia makazi yao. Je Inaweza kuwa mpango wa kuiba hizo bunduki uliandaliwa kwa ushirikiano wa watu fulani mashuhuri. Bastola hizo huenda hazikuibiwa na yote yaliyotendeka katika barabara ya Waiyaki. Inakisiwa kuwa mpango miongoni mwa ndugu wao na walenzi hao wawili ambao mmoja wao alitumia jina bandia kuandikisha taarifa hizo katika kituo cha polisi cha Langata baada ya ile ya Parklands. Mahala ambapo tukio hilo lilijiri. Were you behind the stage managed car jacking of two presidential escort unit officers? The presidential escort guard who was car jacked. There was not in duty. They drove us home. Then they went to their girlfriends in some uh, college or somewhere. So when they were in college, some carjackers, they came, it was white Lexus, they put guns on them, they took the car, then they realized it is 
presidential escort and the car is belong to him. So they drove the car, had guns, everything been recovered in uh, CID office. They just returned, somehow they managed to return the guns. And those boys was being transferred to one, I think, to Somali border, one another place. Do you remember the names? Names, names, names. Ali, one was Ali. Ni dhahiri kuwa mtu fulani mashuhuri alikuwa akitaka bunduki hizo kutumiwa na ndugu hao wawili. Licha ya hayo visa vingi vya walifu vilianza kuripotiwa huku magari kadhaa yakianza kuibiwa. Duru zinatoarifu kuwa mandugu hao wa Kiarmenia walianza kuiba magari na baada ya kubadilisha nambari za usajili za gari hizo na zile za magari mabovu zilizopata ajali zilizokuwa zimeegeshwa katika kituo cha polisi cha Gigiri. Kutafuta ukweli wa mambo kuhusiana na suala hili, tulianza uchunguzi wetu na kufuatilia visa vya magari yaliyodaiwa kuibiwa au kutumika na ndugu hao wa Kiarmenia. Miaka sita baadaye, katika kituo cha polisi cha Gigiri, tulipata gari la kwanza nambari ya usajili KAU 838Y. Gari ambalo hadi kufikia wa leo polisi wameshindwa kuelezea au kutambua mwenyewe na ambalo linakisiwa kuwa miongoni mwa magari yaliyonyang'anywa wa Kenya na kutumiwa na ndugu hao. Wakiwa nchini Atur Magarian kando na kupewa ulinzi wa kutosha na wadhifa wa naibu kamishna wa polisi alitembelea kambi moja ya polisi kambi ya mafunzo ya GSU Mahala ambapo dawa za kulevya aina ya cocaine zilikuwa zimehifadhiwa. Atur alipata fursa ya kukagua dawa hizo. Tell me something about your visit uh, at the GSU training uh, college in Embakasi uh, when you were going there to inspect where uh, the entire cocaine was being uh, stored. Uh, tell me uh, last time you you told me something but I, I couldn't get you clearly. You say you went there as who and what is your role when you uh, reached that place? And, and when was this? Sure. First time I went there, it was meeting with the Terek uh, to bring instructors to train the entire presidential guard. Instructors from the Russia. Okay, so he was asking to bring some good instructors and that was exactly after the presidential guard was hijacked, carjacked. So we went there, he was saying this, his boys are mentally not ready and they need some good instructors who will train them not only physically or shooting, but also to train them mentally. Yeah. In which we say we have to we don't think so that will be possible, but we will we'll keep. Meeting was as a surprise, we are not ready to answer you anything. That was just meeting to GSU. The second time I went to the Joseph Gamal, that was to see the one container cocaine, where it was kept for our two brothers to build. Um, uh, drugs storage, the central like for drugs enforcement agent to have a place where they will bring entire uh, confiscated drugs. The visit was to show how medical condition and this was the most secure place by Joseph was explaining that in police stations and everywhere they think every day and it is not secure, it is not safe, many things is missing. So it was request from Stanley Moraga and Joseph Kamar, two brothers, to invest and build one secure building that all the drugs will be kept. Mr. Tu, tell me, uh, did you see the drugs yourself? And, uh, yeah, of course. Well, of course. How, describe for us how the place was for us to be sure that you were there. Just tell us where where the drugs were kept, uh, under what condition were they kept, so that we can 
get a picture so that when we talk about this, someone will believe that yeah, we are. It was, it was, it was uh, like, uh, you know, these juice boxes, the square, like this uh, big juice boxes, this one and a half liter, and it was really hard. That's it. I mean, how many boxes were these? Oh, I don't know, I didn't count, I just... No, now, now tell me, were they in a room? Where were they? Just, just, I, I've never been to GSU training school. Just try and make me understand. I mean, were you led to some, some room? Were you some open place? No, it was packed. It was hard packing. And the place was like, uh, you know, the armor, next to armor room somewhere. It was in the room, it was locked the room. Mr. Atul, you are talking it about... Was like so. Okay, you are talking about the keys to the store, where the drugs are being stored. So who had these keys? You are mentioning names. Who are the keys? Well, one was with Joseph Schur. The second, I think he was saying with it today. I don't know the rest. But Joseph was saying the, uh, the it's very limited uh, entry. So here one killed one. I, 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 I don't remember. I was thinking he was saying it's with the Mr. Atui, that is a no go it's a no go zone place. How can you how could you visit there alone? With whose permission? Because I was because I was the beauty commissioner of police. Because? My, my rank was deputy commissioner of police. Oh, because you are deputy commissioner of police, that's why you visited that place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jichopevu sasa limebaini kuwa ndugu wao walikuwa zaidi ya saba na sio wawili. Wa kwanza ni Atur Gevorkhian, aliyeingia Kenya tarehe 10 Novemba mwaka 2005 mwezi mmoja kabla ya kukamatwa kwa dawa haramu ya kokeni mjini Malindi na Embakasi. Aliondoka nchini tarehe 15 ya mwezi huo huo na kurudi tena Januari 8 mwaka 2006 kutoka tena na kurudi tarehe 23 Januari kabla ya kuondoka nchini Februari 25 mwaka 2006 siku sita baada ya kuuawa kwa afisa mkuu wa GSU Erastus Kirui Chemorei Wa pili ni Arman Taski Dimitri, raia wa Moldovia, na aliyekuwa wakati mwingine akitumia jina la Arman Sakarsian. Watatu ni Park Alexander, raia wa Urusi aliyeingia nchini Februari 10 mwaka 2006 kabla ya kuondoka Mei tarehe 10 mwaka huo huo. Wa nne ni Atur Magarian, aliyewasili nchini sawia na Atur Gevorkhian. November tarehe 10 mwaka wa 2005 Atur Magarian kando na jina lake alikuwa akitumia majina ya Atur Gevorkhian, Andrei Priluski na Arman Sarkisian. Watano ni Atur Sagarsian, aliyewasili siku sawia na ndugu yake, lakini akitumia ndege tofauti na wakati mwingine majina ya Atur Gevorkhian, Andrei Priluski na Artak Sakarsian wote raia wa Armenia na waliotembelea mataifa ya Pakistan, Dubai na Sri Lanka. Mwingine ni Alexander Park raia wa Urusi, aliyeingia nchini tarehe 28 mwezi wa 3 mwaka 2006. Dmitri Taski raia wa Moldova, aliwasili nchini siku sawia na Alexander Park. Wengine ni Andre Priluski, raia wa Urusi na aliyewasili nchini mwezi wa sita mwaka huo huo. Nyakarshan Trena, Manish Yadav, ambaye pia alitumia jina la Manish Shador Bob, Sobka Oleg, Gargan Dapar na wa mwisho ni Arman Kureshi, raia wa India aliyewasili nchini mwezi wa tatu mwaka 2006 na aliyekuwa akitumia majina ya Arman Muhammad Umar na Arman Mohamed Bureni wote hawa waliingia nchini na kufanya mengi pasi kujulikana Kamati ya bunge iliyoundwa kuchunguza matukio ya ndugu hao 
iligadhabishwa na uchunguzi wa polisi kiasi cha kupendekeza kukamatwa kwa mkurugenzi wa operesheni mkoa Nairobi wakati huo David Kimayo OCPD wa gigiri wakati huo Patrick Lumumba ambaye sasa ni kamanda wa trafiki Nairobi area kwa kudinda kufika mbele ya tume hiyo na kutoa ushahidi wao Tunapo zungumza taifa nzima au tusikiza Tunapo uliza maswali sisi upata jawabu Tunapo sikia sisi uhakikisha Sio vile tunavyoifanya bali ni moyo wetu wa kujitolea muhanga Tuko katika mstari wa mbele kukuletea dondo za hapa na pale Kuanzia hapa Niko hapa Antwerp Ubelgiji. Kwa mujibu wa polisi wa Uganda ni kwamba hii ndio mbinu ya usafiri iliyotumiwa na washukiwa wa kigaidi. Niko katika ikulu ya Portland, mita 300 mkabala na Guba la Edeni. Hatuna mipaka. Ni taifa ambalo wananchi wamezoea kuishi kwa mtupu kwa bunduki. Hapa Amsterdam Uholanzi. Niko katika mpaka wa Kenya na Tanzania hapa Tarakea. Atuogopi chochote. Wacha nikuje hapo tuonge. Hatua ya kwanza ni hapa katika kizuizi cha Kanagoni, mahala ambapo ni sharti upewe ulinzi wa kutosha kuelekea. Uwezi mzi wa kuzungumza. Kilomita mbili kutoka kituo hiki cha polisi cha kushika doria cha Ishakani ni kambi ya wanajeshi wa Kenya. Nalo lijua sisi ni kukuletea wewe shabiki wetu wa dhati habari tendeti na za kuaminika jiunge nami mwana habari wako mpekuzi Mohamed Ali katika ziara yangu ya jichopevu kwa taarifa za kustaajabisha na kupasu wa moyo Mwana dada huyu, wini wangoi, mwanawe mwanasiasa mkereketu wa meri wamboi, alionekana kujua mengi, na kuwa na ukuruba na ndugu hao, na ajabu ni kwamba idare ya polisi hadi kufikia waleo, imeshindwa kuelezea bayana. Katika mahojiano na chumba kimoja cha habari, Winfred wangoi mwai, alimuaga mtama na kuelezea mengi kuhusu usiano wake na ndugu hao wawili wa kiarmenia. Last year was full of drama. Of course. <laughs> and um, it all had to do with the Armenians. Yes. Where did you meet them? In Dubai. In Dubai? Yes. Okay. You were introduced to them by a mutual friend or? Yeah, mutual friend. Okay. Would you like to tell me who that is? Or? No, I don't think I want to mention their names. Yeah. Yes, but okay. a mutual friend. When I was on holiday. Mm -hmm. in 2005 and that's when you decided to do business with them not exactly first it was just friendship normal when you meet somebody you know you have to know each other well mm -hmm. and then you decide you know what do you do back in your country can we do something together then you go back and think for some time mm -hmm. then you say yes or no okay yeah so then after a while you decided to do business with Yes, them. after a while I decided we wanted to do things together. And that's when you set up Kensington Holdings? Not necessarily immediately. Kando na biashara zao, ukuruba kati ya Winfred Wangoi Mwain Arthur Magarian ulinoga sana kiasi cha wao kujionyesha wazi mbele ya wa Kenya ukuu akipokea ulinzi wa hali ya juu na magari yaliyokuwa bila nambari za usajili. Mamake Mary Wamboi naye kwa upande wa pili huonekana na walinzi wa serikali na hakuna mtu yoyote anayeweza kuelezea ni nani anailipia haya yote. Mwende pasipo tafas. Iko nini bwana? 
Hatua ambayo ilizua hali ya sintufahamu miongoni mwa wanasiasa kuhusiana na ushirikiano wao na ndugu wao wa Kiarmenia. Those faces are, are as familiar. They have been seen in state house uh, before. So we want to ask the question why is all these operations shrouded in secrets? Licha ya taarifa hizo ikulu ya rais ilijitenga na madai hayo na kupinga uhusiano na ndugu wao wa Kiarmenia. I therefore take great exception to a story appearing in today's edition of the Sunday Nation insinuating that there are links between my family and two foreigners who were recently deported from the country. November mwaka wa 1998 baadhi ya majasusi wa Urusi Almaruf KGB walikashifu vikali serikali ya Urusi kwa madai ya kuhusika na mauaji ya tajiri mmoja wa Kirusi kwa jina la Boris Berezovki. Hatua hii ilisababisha kukamatwa kwa afisa mmoja wa ujasusi kwa jina la Alexander Letvinenko kabla ya kuachiliwa na kutorokea nchini Uingereza pamoja na familia yake. Novemba mwaka wa 2006 Letvinenko alisemekana kuwekewa sumu kwenye kinywaji chake kabla ya kuaga dunia siku 22 baadaye. Serikali ya Uingereza kupitia uchunguzi wake ilibaini kuwa Letvinenko alitiliwa sumu na afisa wa KGB kwa jina la Andre Lugovoe na aliyekimbilia taifa lake baada ya mauaji hayo. Alexander Letvinenko katika kitabu chake kabla ya kuuawa Alisema kuwa baadhi ya maafisa wa Urusi walikuwa wakiwaua maadui wa taifa hilo kando na kuwalinda walanguzi wa dawa za kulevya na kuwa paulinzi wa hali ya juu hususan kwa walanguzi kutoka mataifa ya Pakistan, Iran na Amerika Kusini. Mataifa ambayo Atur Magarian na Atur Sagarsian walikuwa wakitembelea mwaka 2005 na 2006 wakitumia majina tofauti bandia. Je, kuna uwezekano kuwa walanguzi wa kuu kutoka mataifa ya Colombia, Venezuela na Pakistan walikuwa wakishirikiana na mamluki wa Urusi kukomboa dawa za haramu za cocaine zilizo naswa nchini Kenya? Mamluki wengi wanaaminika kutoka mataifa yaliyokuwa chini ya iliyokuwa serikali ya muungano wa Urusi, USSR. Je, Wawili hao walikuwa mamluki wa kukinga walanguzi wa dawa za kulevya kupitia barua pepe kwa ubalozi wa Urusi hapa nchini. Ubalozi huo ilizitaja pasi za usafiri za Atur Magarian na Atur Sagarsian kama gushi. Mtandao kutoka ubalozi wa Marekani huko nchini uliwataja ndugu hao kama mamluki kutoka mataifa ya Bosnia, Urusi ama Ukraine. Aliyekuwa waziri wa mambo ya nje Kalonzo Mosioka ambaye sasa ni makamu wa rais aliambia balozi la Marekani kuwa alikuwa akidhania ndugu hao walikuwa mamluki na walanguzi wa dawa za kulevya ambao walikuja humu nchini kuwadhalilisha watu ambao walikuwa wakifuatilia sakata ya dawa za kulevya ya mwaka wa 2004 yenye dhamani ya shilingi bilioni 6.4 na iliyokamatwa mjini Malindi na Nairobi Huku hayo ya kijiri tarehe kumi mwezi wa nane mwaka 2009 afisa wa GSU kwa jina la Hussein Galdaya nambari ya usajili 59999 akiwa anaelekea nyumbani kwake katika barabara ya Kusi alipigwa risasi 14 na kuua wapapo hapo katika njia isiyoeleweka ajabu ni kwamba watu wote waliokuwa naye ndani ya gari hili waliachwa pasi na kushambuliwa kando na mauaji hayo polisi walishindwa kuelezea mengi kuhusu mwanamke waliyekuwa naye kabla ya kifo chake na ambaye alijiunga na wauaji wa afisa huyo wa GSU katika mazishi ya marehemu mengi yalizungumziwa na wakuu wake lakini hadi kufikia leo hamna lolote lilozo matunda Uchunguzi pia unaonesha wazi kuwa polisi hawakuwa na nia ya kufuatilia kesi ya marehemu Hussein Galdaya ambaye alikuwa kiungo muhimu
katika kitengo cha GSU. Kuwawa kwa Hussein Galdaya kunazidi kuongeza idadi ya maafisa wa polisi katika orodha ya maafisa waliouawa katika njia isiyoeleweka. Je, hali hii itaendelea hadi lini? Muhammad Ali makala ya jichopevu KTN Leo. Na mtazamaji mwenye jicho hambi tazama na mwenye sikio hambi wisikiza. <laughs> na mtakubaliana nami kwamba biisha ilikuwa yalikuwa ni makala ya kusisimua. Mm, na, na bila shaka kabla umefuatiliza kuanzia mwanzo paruanja mm -hmm. tuangalie ule ma, makala ya kwanza hadi no. kufikia sasa. Majibu yako wazi. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo serikali zitupotezee wakati kitu <laughs> kwamba hawajui kuendelea nini. Kila no. kitu pale pale maafisa wa polisi wamesema tutasubiri kuna waliotajwa kama hapo kesho basi ya Jumatatu waweza mm -hmm. kujitokeza na kutuambia msimamo wao ni upi. Na mna vile vile tupate fursa ya kusoma arafa moja mbili tatu hivi mmoja hapa anasema kutoka Borabu ni Fredo Mbati anasema tafadhali rudieni makala jichopevu we have no power msijali kesho tutarejelea <laughs> na kama kesho tukirejelea tuambiwa kama hakuna nguvu za umeme mm -hmm. tutarejelea tena na, tena. <laughs> na pia kama uwezi kuona kupitia runinga yako unaweza kwenda katika tovuti yetu www.ktnkenya.tv utatupata tuki stream live kwa hivyo utaweza kuona kupitia mtandao na kupitia mtandao wa Twitter mtazamaji mm -hmm. mmoja anasema ongera sana KTN na KTN leo na jichopevu mm -hmm. kwa kazi hiyo nzuri muendelee hivyo hivyo kutufungua macho makala hii chopevu maleta wa Kenya kwa pamoja na mwingine hapa anasema jamani Muhammad Ali atapata usalama atapewa usalama wa kutosha baada ya kutuambia mambo yote haya lakini kidogo ameandika kwa Kiingereza kwa hivyo na mmoja audiza swali Atura alikuwa naibu mkuu wa polisi wa police commissioner. <laughs> wa, basi mtazamaji ni mambo ambayo huwezi kupata mahala pengine popote ila ni hapa hapa kwenye eh, KTN chaguo lako. Naam. Tunasema asante sana kwa mashabiki kwa watazamaji wa penzi wa KTN Leo na KTN Trump kwa kutunga mkono katika safari hii ya kutazama makala yetu kwa moyo huo. Asante sana. Na leo ni moja tunawaahidi kwamba kila uchao tutakuwa tukizindua mambo mapya na mambo ya kufungua wewe macho wa subscribe wetu mpenzi. Na kama ilivyo ada wamezama na watazuka tena hivi karibuni. Nikuwa nami Lulu Hassan na kutakia usiku mwema. Na mimi mwanaisha Kizuga basi kesho upande wa pili kuanzia saa kumi hadi saa moja. Na kwenye mshikiti wa Radio Maisha angalau kidogo tufundishe roho baada ya pressure jicho pevu. Oh,